The six major hormones produced in the anterior pituitary are FSH, LH, ACTH, TSH, prolactin, and GH. The ones in the blue are basophilic, FSH, LH, ACTH, and TSH. The ones in the pink are acetophilic, prolactin, and growth hormone. One way to remember the basophils is to use the mnemonic B flat, which stands for FSH, LH, ACTH, and TSH. And your acetophils are prolactin and growth hormone. The control of hormone secretion is concentrated on three main areas. The hypothalamus, anterior pituitary, and its target organ for which the hormone acts upon. The target organ will vary from hormone to hormone, as we'll see in the upcoming details. The first hormone that we'll talk about is ACTH. The hypothalamus will secrete and release CRH, which will stimulate the anterior pituitary, which will then release ACTH which will act upon the adrenal cortex to stimulate and release cortisol into the bloodstream. The first hormone that we will talk about is ACTH. The hypothalamus releases CRH which stimulates the anterior pituitary to release ACTH which will stimulate the target organ, in this case, which is adrenal cortex, which will then release the hormone cortisol. We will now look at the negative feedback loop of this hormone. Cortisol has a negative feedback loop. It affects the anterior pituitary and also the hypothalamus. If there's an excess amount of cortisol in the bloodstream, this will try to decrease the amount of ACTH and also decrease the amount of CRH. On the right hand side, we'll see Cushing's disease will affect the anterior pituitary gland. Addison's disease will affect the adrenal cortex and congenital adrenal hyperplasia will affect the production of cortisol via the deficiency of 11 or 21 alpha hydroxylase enzyme. Now we'll start talking about the thyrotrophs. The hypothalamus releases TRH which stimulates the anterior pituitary which releases TSH which then affects the target organ, and in this case, it's a thyroid gland, which secretes T4 and T3 into the bloodstream. The negative feedback loop of the thyroid hormone is as such. An excessive amount of T4, T3 in the bloodstream will negatively feed back to the anterior pituitary to decrease the amount of TSH. In Graves' disease, this disease directly affects your thyroid gland where it will have antibodies that will stimulate the TSH receptor producing an excessive amount of T4, T3. Hyperthyroid and also hypothyroid is defined as an excess or deficiency of T4, T3 hormone. Hashimoto's also happens in the, inside the thyroid gland. Hashimoto's attacks the enzyme peroxidase, which is critical in two reactions inside the thyroid gland. Now we'll talk about the somatotropes. 
the hypothalamus will secrete SRH, which will stimulate the anterior pituitary and release growth hormone, which will act on its target organ, which is mainly the liver, which will then release IGF. The hypothalamus also secretes somatostatin, which is a inhibitor of growth hormone. The negative feedback loop for somatotrophs is as such. An excessive amount of IGF-1 will have a negative effect on the anterior pituitary to decrease the amount of growth hormone. It will also stimulate the hypothalamus which will secrete more somatostatin which is an inhibitor of growth hormone so the overall effect will be decreased amount of growth hormone. Also, increased amount of growth hormone will negatively feed back to the hypothalamus to decrease the levels of SRH. The condition related to growth hormone is called acromegaly. This is a benign tumor on the pituitary gland which will produce an excess amount of growth hormone. Now to talk about the gonadotrophs. The hypothalamus will release GnRH which will stimulate the anterior pituitary to release FSH and also LH. The FSH acts on its target organ which are the ovaries. In the sertori cells, they will secrete the hormone inhibin. The hormone LH will affect its target organ which is the testes. In the Leydig cells, which will secrete the hormone testosterone. The negative feedback loop of the gonadotrophs is as such. Excessive amounts of inhibin will negatively affect the anterior pituitary to decrease the amount of FSH. An excessive amount of testosterone will negatively feed back to the anterior pituitary to decrease the amount of LH and also negatively feed back to the hypothalamus to decrease the amount of GnRH being released. Now finally we'll talk about the mammotrophs. The mammotrophs are somewhat different from the previous hormones that we have talked about. They are different because the hypothalamus does not have a releasing hormone to act on the anterior pituitary gland. Instead, the hypothalamus will release dopamine which will affect the anterior pituitary in a negative way. This will always inhibit the production of prolactin which will act on its target organ, which is the mammary gland, to produce milk. So if you are not pregnant or not lactating, that means that your hypothalamus is continuously producing dopamine to inhibit the production of prolactin, and hence no production of milk. If you are pregnant and are producing the hormone prolactin, the hormone in excess amounts will stimulate the hypothalamus, which in then will release dopamine, which will negatively affect the anterior pituitary to decrease the amounts of prolactin and hence decrease the production of milk.